Well, all I can say about the weather is that it's still cold and it's currently not raining, but that we probably had two or three inches of rain overnight last night. It was really heavy. And uh, you can see the little intermittent creek down there is pretty full of water. If, we, if it had been snow, if it had been like three degrees colder, because I think it was about 35 here last night, we would have been in trouble. I owe Johnny extra good hot chocolate for being out in the cold at Pokemon Go Community Day yesterday. <laughs> Don's finishing up his breakfast, although there's yep. <clears throat> cinnamon rolls waiting for him in the kitchen. Right. So yesterday you were saying you wished you could thumbs up videos because what good was it to watch them if you couldn't, you know, right. do something? So on the new TV, uh, they do give you the ability uh, to hit thumbs up. You, get, you have to pause it. But then when you pause it, you do get a the ability to thumbs up uh, and, you know, that kind of stuff. Cool. So one of the advantages of having the new um, heated mattress pad cover is that on Sundays and Saturdays when it's cheap electricity, I can turn it on and give the cats a little extra heat. Hi, guys. Is everybody in here? Just you two? Gray and Tux? I hear your heater going. Hi, guys. There's Slate. Here, Slate. Are you going to come get in your bed? I was surprised you weren't in your bed. Tux made the mistake of getting up, and Gray didn't waste any time taking the better spot. I was noticing that my winter Daphne, the taller plant on the right here with the uh, little bit of variegation in the leaves, is about ready to bloom. And there's a line of daffodils on the left um, that are all the way up and have their blooms pretty much ready to open. So if we get a couple more of those warm winter days, they're probably going to open. I'd say the daffodils are a little early. I mean, we see them the last week in January, the first week in February, but for them to be all the way up with the blooms pretty far along um here the second week in january that's that's pretty early there's a light mist out there right now and i debated take ruby or take the van but um ruby's quick heat and overall comfort won out today i'm a little more apt to hop in the van in the summer time because you know of, of the ice cars they take a little longer to have real heat <laughs> coming out uh so I'm just headed to get my Pokemon, and I think I'm going to pop into Guardian Angel and just relax and walk around for a few minutes. Don has settled in to watch the football game, and Johnny is on with uh, one of his friends from school playing on the computer. So everybody's doing their relaxing, chill-out thing today. Yeah, it's a nice, calm, relaxing Sunday. I won't be gone home, and then I'll be piled up on the love seat with, with Don to watch some football, too. I stopped in at the environmental park and spun the Pokestop, and Johnny and I both hit our seven-day streak today, so it's a really good thing I didn't get too lazy and just stay at the house. Also, um, at Pokemon Community Day yesterday, I had um, some friends hop in the back as well as the other mom that was uh, riding with me uh, when we battled the gym. And I wanted to show them um, my photos up on the web browser because they were, you know, pretty excited to see the size of the screen. And I just couldn't get anything on the web browser. And I saw I only had one bar LTE. And then when I got in the garage last night, I was on the Wi-Fi. I still couldn't get the web page to come up. And I thought, well, I'll deal with it tomorrow. So it still seemed to be hung up for lack of a more technical word this morning and I did a scroll wheel uh, reboot while I was sitting here at the Pokestop and now it's working just fine. So I have not had that happen before and it's no big deal but it just comes back to you know before you call in the troops you might try a uh, scroll wheel reboot uh, you know with or without your foot on the brake. Foot on the brake is better I think and uh, can do a few more things. And just see if that doesn't fix the problem first. So I've got my picture up there that I want now. I haven't fed mealworms this year because we haven't had a particularly harsh winter and uh, too many cats around. But uh, this is a picture from a few years ago up on the rail on the front porch. And uh, boy, was it uh, so much fun and a real treat to see so many bluebirds at one time. Taken through the window because, of course, if I went out there, I would have scared them off. But... um still pretty neat at least it's not raining right now that's about the best thing i can say about the weather today <laughs>
guess at least it's not snowing right now. The kids probably will go to school tomorrow. I think they will. I don't think it's supposed to freeze up overnight, which would be a problem. There are some Valentine's Day things out today, but nothing that I feel like I need to take home with me. I'm back to Ruby now, and you can see it's been sprinkling while I was in there. It's a little after four, so I'm thinking it's uh, time for me to get myself back to the house. I ended up getting a tablecloth and, uh, you know, enjoyed browsing. There's Donnie. I thought he was going to take the day off. Hi, Donnie. I love you. Tonight's dinner, a beef stew. So I've uh, been watching several videos related to EV adoption lately um, and reminded me of a Seeking Alpha article that I found by listening to Zach and Jesse's In Depth, which was from uh, December 4th, 2018, where they discussed Ross Tennyson's November 28th or 29th uh, article on uh, big oil and uh, the impact of uh, of uh, ice on ice car sales uh, coming by 2023. Uh, the exact article was EVs, oil, and ice impact by 2023 and beyond. Uh, Jesse, Zach, and Zach, Jesse's in depth uh, did a really good job of covering something. But I got a couple reminders this week. The first was um, that Seeking Alpha article. Of course, I'm not a really big fan of Seeking Alpha, but I like this Ross guy. He he wrote well. Uh, I think he, he is, I agree with pretty much everything he said, um, but one of the things that could impact um, EV adoption, of course, is the oil price. And here in North Carolina, the, uh, the price, a gallon of oil, a gallon of gas is going for about $2.05. Uh, Micah's video last week, I saw, uh, he was in Austin. Austin, uh, Michael Subasiki, uh, we watched his videos. He was in Austin, it was $1.86. So, uh, you know, uh, gasoline prices here in the U.S. are very low. Uh, that is not the same as uh, in other places. Um, James Cook's mother is uh, looking to buy a new vehicle and he's trying to convince her to buy a, an electric uh, car. And uh, he's been calling around to various different dealerships. Uh, uh, like an example he put in his video was uh, Hyundai. Uh, the, the Kona is very popular. And when he talked to the dealer in the UK, the dealer says, oh, well, there's a 42-week waiting period. And that brought it, brought, brings me all the way back to this Seeking Alpha article. And uh, now you know uh, in depth by Zach and Jesse. There was a survey of Americans and about approximately 40% of Americans said their next vehicle they would consider uh, buying electric. Now that's today in 2018-19 that people are already thinking and as Zach and Jesse explained in the Seeking Alpha article explained that the mere fact that 40% of the people are thinking about it uh, is probably what's killing car sedan car sales in the U.S. Uh, you know, there's been announcements uh, by both GM and Ford that they're going to stop selling um, the bulk of their passenger cars. Uh, you know, they're basically going to only sell SUVs and they're only going to sell uh, trucks. And that's that's probably a good strategy for them right now. But that is unless the same thing happens in the SUV and truck market and basically uh, this people who are thinking about buying an electric car today uh, that doesn't mean they're going to buy it today this week this month or even this year but they've got in their mind that they're going to buy an electric car in maybe a couple years well what that does is that kills any uh, ice car sales immediately in other words, um, you're not going to go to your local dealership and buy an ICE car if you already made up your mind that you're just waiting for the electric car with the range and the attributes that you desire uh, to meet your needs. You know it's coming. It's just a couple years away, so you don't buy the electric car. So that could uh, very well uh, lead to uh, a significant reduction in ICE car sales. 
uh, today. And I think that's why Ford and GM and so forth are getting out of that business. Well, the logic there is that, oh, well, we'll go build trucks and SUVs because that's what's selling. Well, that's only going to work a little bit because as soon as somebody like Tesla or this Rivian or uh, there's another uh, uh, power truck company, uh, uh, built, uh, somebody's going to build a viable electric pickup truck. And when that happens, there's going to a lot of truck buyers going to say, oh, well, there's an electric version of a truck. A pickup truck now I think my next pickup truck will be electric also and uh, so that will again stop them from pulling the trigger and buying their next uh, gasoline or diesel powered pickup truck they'll wait hold on to the truck they've got for a couple years until the pickup truck they are looking for electric comes out and so that's going to make a big impact on truck sales and you know um, SUVs are coming very quickly. Obviously, there's already a Model X out, uh, but they're very pricey. And the I-Pace is coming and uh, or is out, but it's still a little pricey too. But this Kona Electric with its 42-week waiting period in uh, um, the UK, that's a telling thing. That means there's a lot of people that basically say, well, I'm willing to wait maybe over a year before I get my car. They've made their decision they're not going to buy a gasoline car and that's going to come to the states. But granted, the low oil prices uh, is going to slow that. I mean, honestly, I, at $1.86 a gallon, I mean, you know, it's cheaper than milk. Uh, you know, it's a shame we can't come up with more uses for gasoline, I guess. I don't know because it's dirt cheap. Uh, but, you know, that's subject to change. You know, it's one a little conflict in the Middle East away from uh, going up quite significantly. And uh, if that happens, um, oil prices can slow it, which is what Ross said in his article, but it can't really stop it. It's, it's, a, it's pretty much a done deal. So I think people really are uh, thinking about their next vehicle is going to be an EV. And they're not buying sedans. And that same logic is going to apply to trucks and SUVs just as well so uh, I think that the, the concept that 2023 uh, is going to uh, it is going to take decades that uh, for the 50 percent of the car sales to be electric um, you know it, it isn't going to be decades it may not be 2023 but 2025 2027 I mean it's going to come much sooner than anybody expects going to take my shower I'll clean up the kitchen, sweetie. Are Don't you worry. sure yes. you'll clean up the kitchen? I, I'll clean up the kitchen. It it might be a little worse than normal. Well, were you in there cooking? Yes. Uh, I'm sure it's pretty good. <laughs>